Welcome back to Board Game O'Clock, where it's always time for board games. Today we've got a brand new game to Board Game Arena, The Voyages of Marco Polo. Been around for a while, but just released on Board Game Arena, so lots of people wanting to play at the moment. So we're going to play through ourselves and, and teach you a wee bit how to play as we go along. But first of all, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe because we've got lots more content coming your way. All right, it's our turn to start. Let's let's get stuck in. So let's. There's quite a bit to this game, and you can play two to four players. So let's just explain how to play the base game, and then I'll explain, you know, the cards that change the game completely. So you have these dice. You start with five dice each, which is all the colored dice. So I've got the red dice here. And my opponent, Jimmy Joe, who was from the United States, 53 ELO, so so possibly a beginner at the game, or at least a beginner on board game arena. So Jimmy Joe in the green starts with five dice as well, of the green dice. And they get rolled each turn. And you get to place those dice on the different spaces on the board. Um, and those uh, spaces give you the value, um, which I'll describe in a second. So where can you place your dice? Well, let me just do this one here. All right, so just before I get into where you can place your dice, I'm just going to decide what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to put my dice down here on this track. All righty, so where have I been putting my dice so far? I've been putting them down here on this track and this is the bazaar or the the market and you get resources based on the roll of the dice now you can see you put your dice on this side of the track here and the uh, symbols here is how many dice you need to put there so on these ones there was just one space on this on the silk track you need two dice like my opponent has done on this top gold track you need three dice to put there and the amount of spaces that you move is equal to the lowest dice on or, or the lowest number on the dice so here so you see i put a six so i got the six track my opponent had two sixes so they got the six track as well because that's the lowest number as it's our turn let's let's what are we going to do what are we going to do let's go this way now what I'm doing now is a wee bit different. I'll explain what that is a wee bit later. But for now I'm going to go on this gold track and I'm going to click this this fifth one actually. And I'm going to go down here to Alexandria. All right, and I will pass. So so it's it's the value of the lowest dice. So for example, if if I played a 6, a 6 and a 2, I would get the the resources from the two track or the one track. You can always you can always pick a lower track if you want. Just like I did then, I picked the five track even though I had all sixes there, I picked the five track. But it's it's that track or lower. If my opponent had a 6 and a, and a 1 there, even though that would have been a 6, they would have only been able to choose from the one track because it's the lower dice out of the two. All right, my turn now. Let's go here, change the value. I'm going to go change it to a six and I'm going to put it right. Ooh, where do I want to put it? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to put it here. We're going to do that four times. Alrighty. Let's pass over to our opponent. So that is, that is the resource track. Now, what are the resources? These bottom ones, they are camels. And so for each die you roll, you get one camel, one, two, three, four, five, six camels. The second track is peppers, the third track is silk, and the top track here is gold. Now there are a couple of other symbols. You can see this symbol here is money or coins. The uh, these ones are camels. So this one you get two gold and two camels. And this track up here is a movement, and you use the movement to move around the board, which I'll explain very shortly. As we do that, let's just change this value, change it to a six. Where are we going to go? What am I going to do? 
I could get some peppers. I could get some. Let's change it to a six. Let's get some. Let's let's go down here. Why not? Let's go down here. And get me a gold. All right. And pass, and that's the end of the first round. At, there's five rounds in total. That was the first round, all all done and dusted. So we're moving through this very nicely. Um, okay, so that is that is the market. So where else can you put your your your, your people? You can also put them down here in Khan's favor. So in a two-player game, two of the spots are blocked, but we still got two spots here free in the two-player game. So what do you get? You get two camels and you get to choose a resource as well. So you can choose either a gold, a pepper or a silk. So that's really nice, but there is one catch. You have to play a dice that is higher than the last dice that's been played there. So for example, if I put a six here, then my opponent would have to use a six if they want to go on this track. Hang on, let's, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's our turn. Let's change this value to a six, I think. Do we want to do that? We could travel. Let's let's actually travel. I'm going to travel. I'm going to change this to a two, and this one to a two as well. Use these two dice. Or actually, 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 what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to fill this first and buy another dice. Alrighty, there we go. Use these two dice to travel, and I'll explain travel very shortly. Don't worry, we will get there. There's quite a bit to this game in there. And then, oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to have to undo that because I've, I've miscalculated my amount of uh, camels. <laughs> so let's just put that plan on hold. I'm instead going to change the value, and I'm instead going to Come down onto this pepper track, I think. Actually, no, let's go to Khan's favor. Let's do exactly what, let, let's demonstrate that. So I put a six here, so my opponent would have to put a six down there if they want to use that track. And let's take a gold, because it's, oh, let's actually take, let's take one of these other rest. Let's take a silk. All right. And I'm going to pass. So that is Khan's favor. Khan's favor, two camels and one resource. And you have to play uh, the higher number or the same number on uh, if you want to play it. What else is there? There is also these contracts. Now you can see you've got two spaces for contracts here. And if you put a dice on this little track, you can take contracts, which you can fill. That gives you victory points and also some other bonus. So every contract will give you victory points plus a different bonus. They could be camels, like in this one. They could be an extra dice, like in that one. Okay, what are we going to do now? We're going to... Let's do that movement, which I tried to do last turn. I'm going to come down here. And we're going to do two movements there. And then to here. All right. And pass. Okay, so... Yeah, you can take contracts. So, and the contracts that you can take are equal to the number of the dice that you put there. So my opponent put a six, so they get to choose any of the contracts on that list. They could pick the top one or any of the ones before it. And you may pick one or two contracts. That's up to you. But remember, you can only have two contracts at a time. So you can't have more than that. So... Uh, if you have, you know, already have one or two contracts there, then you may have to discard some contracts. But as an added bonus, if you roll a six and you take this top contract, you get to choose either two camels or two money as well as a bonus. Or if you pick the fifth contract, you get one money and one camel as a bonus. So nice to put a nice high number there because you get a small bonus with it. All right, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Let's go... And I'm going to do a move. And it's going to be a good move, hopefully. All right. I could take some gold, do some movement. Maybe that's the way. Let's let's do that. Let's change this value to a 6. Change this one to a 6. Change this one to a 6. Select all of them. I'm going to go on this gold track. 
And even though they're all sixes, I can pick a lower value, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick this one here because I want that movement as well. So I've got three golds and one movement. And I've jumped over here to, to Kochi, and I've put a wee settlement down there, a wee trading post, and I'm going to pass. So yeah, that is the contracts. You get to select contracts, and you get to fill them, and you get a bonus out of them. So for this one, the left-hand side of that card is what you have to pay for it. So you have to pay two camels, three silks, and two golds, and you'd get eight victory points and four camels. And all the contracts are different, so just have a look at the contracts. Generally, at the start of the game, you want to play easy to fill contracts. And then at the end of the game, you want high victory point contracts. Um, so just have a look at those, and, and contracts are generally good to fill. So um, yeah, keep trying to do those. I need to pick some myself, don't I? I've got none here. I need to start taking some contracts. All right, so that is that track. Now let's look at this one, the movement track. So you've got to put two dice here. That is a two dice space. And again, it is the value of the lowest dice that you put down. So my opponent put two ones here. So they only got a choice of this lowest track, the one movement track. You have to pay the amount of coins that it says here. So here for this one, this first one, it says pay three coins for one movement. The second one is pay seven coins for two movement and so on. 12 for three movement, 12 for four movement and so on. So that is that track and that is how you move your, your, your little guy here with the chef's hat around the board. So that, that is movement. Now all those actions that I've just said, oh actually sorry there's one more, there is, there's the money bag. There's the money bag which if you put a, a, a dice here you just get five money. It doesn't matter what value you put there, it could be a one, it could be a six, anything you get five money. So that's not a bad one either. All right, okay, it's our turn. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, let's take some... We need some contracts, don't we? And we need some... Oh, yeah, should we take some contracts? Um, we could take some peppers. Maybe we should do that. We want to move as well. But we do need some, some camels. So let's change this value. I'm going to take some peppers actually. Let's let's take some peppers. And let's let's take that four pepper spot. Alrighty. I'm also going to buy a black dice. And I'm going to pass. Alright, so yeah, that one is is take five coins. Now, if you are the first person to put a dice on the track, you don't have to pay anything. You get that action for free. But if somebody has already gone there. Then you have to pay the value of the lowest die that you put down. So for example, my opponent has gone on this camel track. So they didn't pay anything to go there. But if I want to go there, I need to pay the value of the dice that I put down. So if I put a six there, I'll get my six camels, but I'll also have to pay six money. Now, you can only go on a track once with one with a color of die. So because I've gone here with the peppers, I cannot put another red dice down there. However, there are two other color dice. There are black dice and there are also white dice. Black and white dice can go on a track as many times as you like. So I could go here again with my black dice if I wanted to, but I would need to pay to put it there. I hope that makes sense. I hope that is a, um, it's an important part of the game is blocking each other from taking spaces. All right, my turn. Where am I going to go? I want to travel up here. I also need some, some camels to be able to do that. So I could go on the camel track. Let's do that. Let's go change it to a six. Go down here on the camels. I'm going to take six camels, but I have to pay six money as well. And I'm going to buy a black dice. All right. Pass my turn. So all those actions that I've described, they are main actions. So if you do one of those actions, then um, it's, it's the other person's turn. But there are bonus actions that you can do each turn, which don't end your turn. 
they are take three money, which is this little money bag up here. You can take three money and it won't cause a penalty. Oh, it's hang on. Let's, let's, let's just have a wee think here. I'm going to change the value to six and I'm going to put in down here and get some contracts. Gonna take this top contract because they will give me a, a bonus. I'll be able to take some more camels. And I could take this one and get another bonus, or maybe one of these other ones are better for us. So maybe we could do that. This one I'll be able to fill quite easily and a free black dice. That's quite nice. This one I'll also be able to fill quite easily. Five coins. That's that's not bad either. Which one do we want to do? Let's let's um let's take Oh gosh, I don't know. Let's let's take the black dice. Let's do that. And let's um, pass. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. All right, so yeah, there are bonus actions. So you could put a dice here and you get three coins and that doesn't end your turn. So you could put a dice there, get some money and then do another action like traveling. You could also fill a contract. You can fill a contract that doesn't end your turn. That's a bonus action. So your, your turn doesn't end when you do that. As it's our turn again, I'm going to change these. I'm going to travel to... Because I want to go up here to Cheyenne. So I'm going to change these both to twos. Go on the travel marker. Travel two. It's going to cost me seven coins. Travel up here. Travel on to Cheyenne. And what else? What do I need? Resources. I need, do I need camels? What do I need? I could get some victory points. Uh, let's go. Maybe we should just take some points. Let's just take some points. Because I don't know what else I want to do there. <laughs> All right. Pass. Now, um... So what was I talking about? Gosh, I lost my train of thought there a wee bit. Um, yeah, so the, the bonus actions here. Yeah, so, so you can get money here. You can fill a contract. You can also take an extra dice. So if you see up here on this track, they're all taken this round. But you can pay three camels to take an extra dice. That's a bonus action. And, lo and more dice are really good. You want as many dice as possible. Um, so doing that is, is very good. Uh, I'm going to go change this value now you can see what i'm going to do i'm going to take some camels it's going to cost me four and remember, i place the black dice there even though i've already gone there even though i've already gone there i um it doesn't matter because i've played a different color dice so i can go there twice and i'm going to go here and i'm going to Get me some money. So I'm a bit short on money. Let's use all four. Or I could use three and maybe fill that contract. Let's do that actually. Alright, so I've got a wee bit of money now. Pass. And that's the end of the round. Alright. Collect my bonuses. Let's just get some more victory points. I think that's uh, heading towards the end of the game now. So victory points are key. Um, all of the blue spaces you can stack dice on top of. But the brown spaces, like this one down here, you can't stack dice on top. So only one person can go there. It doesn't matter the color of the dice, but all the blue ones, you can stack dice on top. So you can go there multiple times. Let's fill this contract and get one of those black dice. And I'm also going to... Oh, let's get some more camels so I can buy another dice as well. Buy another dice. So yeah, we're just about finished with the bonus action. So buying buying a black dice with three camels, that is an option. You can also change the value of a dice for, or you can re-roll a dice for one camel. And you can change the value of a dice by one for two camels. So you can increase it by one or you can decrease it by one if that's what you choose. But that costs you two camels. So that are all the bonus actions you can do.
And yeah, as I say, they, that won't cost you a turn. So now let's go for the travel. There's a wee bit to this game, isn't there? Let's go for the travel. And this is a very important part of the game is traveling around the board. So what does that all mean? Well, as we will jump into this, I'm just going to grab some... Do I want some peppers or do I want to... Let's, let's get some peppers, I think. Come down here, get some... Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, undo that. Undo is a bit of a misclick. I don't want that one. I want some peppers. Come down here, put that on the pepper track, and I want me some peppers. All right. So what? So so every player starts in this top right left hand city, Venezia, and then you travel around the board with your player. Um, and he, he travels to all these cities and oasises. Now, these big ones with the name on the top, that is a main city, a big city. The ones with the cities down, the names down the bottom, they're small cities. And all these circles here, they are oasis. Or, or, that's, it's an oasis. I'm just going to change, do this contract. Oh, no, no, I've got another contract. Let's fill that one. So, yeah, they are Oasis. And it takes one travel, two travel, to each of the things that I just mentioned. I'm going to get me some some silk. All right. And I'll pass. Okay. So, so to travel from Venezia to Alexandria, you need one movement. And as I say, you can either get it from this track or you can... Get it from another symbol. So it might be this gold track up here. Or it could be a, a movement on one of the cards. Like we've got one up here. You get one movement. So you can move from one place to another. So to move from Alexandria to Adana down here. You need two movements. So you need to go to this oasis. And then you need to go to Adana. And the cost of moving is what it says on the track between the two places that you're moving. So to move from Alexandria to this oasis, it doesn't cost you anything. But to move from this oasis to Adana, it costs you two camels. To move from Adana to Kochi, it costs you 15 money. So you can see around the board, it costs you different amounts. And um, yeah, it costs you different amounts and uh, just depends on where you're moving from. All right, what do we need? We need some camels. We need some resources. Let's change this to a six. Need me some camels. So I'm going to go down here to the favor. Get me some camels. And I'm going to get a gold as well, I think. Let's do that. Where's my... And we're also going to move. I think that's the way to go. So I've I, I filled this contract and I have one movement. So my character is here in Cheyenne. So I'm going to move to Beijing. And I'm going to pass. All right. So yeah, you move around the board. Now... There's all these little, these markers here. They are called trading posts. Now, your character has to finish in a city in order to place a trading post there. So, for example, if I moved through Alexandria to Adana in the one turn, I wouldn't get to place a trading post in Alexandria because I didn't stop there. I moved through there. So, so you wouldn't get to place a trading post there, but I would get to place one in the place where I stopped, which was Adana. Our turn again. Where do we want to go? Let's um, maybe we could take some more contracts. I think that's the way to go. Come down here, take some contracts, and we want to go to Lanzau as well. So maybe I'll move in that direction. Um, which contracts do I want though? First, let's take let's take this one because I'll get a wee bonus of camels. That's nice. Three silks, that's not many victory points. I want victory points. So maybe we... Oh, nothing's very easy, is it? Nothing's very easy. So let's let's just do that one. It's got silk, so we can finish it. Let's do that. And we can get to take a camel. So, yeah, when you move around the board, you get to um, place your trading post there. And then when you've got a trading post there, you get the benefit of that city. So all the small cities will have, you can see a little explanation mark, and then a benefit. Now you get that benefit when you first move there, 
And you also get that benefit at the start of every round. So these small cities are very valuable. They give you resources or points or um, camels every time or every turn. So you're really nice. Really nice those those ones. Let's fill this contract. I'm gonna take me a gonna take me a gold. Gold's available. What else do I need? I need some peppers. Can I go get some peppers? I think I can. Let's change the value of that dice. Change it to a six. Let's get me some peppers. Take this one. Alright, got some peppers, so I can fill this contract now. Very nice. And I'm gonna pass. So yeah, you get, so see this one here, you get three camels every turn. This one here, which is telling me to do right now, I get the bonus of one other city or small city that I have control of, or any, sorry, it's any other one. So if I click on that, I can get three victory points. I could get three or one camel and three money. I could get three camels. I could get five coins, that's up to me. I'm gonna take three points, I think. Was it heading into the last round? Well, this could be the last round. Oh gosh! Well, this game is flowing. I actually wanted to travel to Lanzau. That might have been a wee bit of a. Oh, okay. So, so this is the last round now. We want to go here. All right. So you get you get that benefit every round. So that they're very strong. You you want to get them early in the game so you have that benefit for the whole game. Really, really nice. Now these big cities. They are very valuable as well. You can put one of your dice here if you want, and you get to do that action. And usually they're very strong. So you want to get some strong uh, cities like this one is. Trade in sets of one camel and one pepper for seven coins. And you can do that the amount of times as the value of the dice that you put there. So if I put a six there, I could do that six times if I have the amount of resources. So it's a really nice, really nice spot. Way more efficient than getting, say, coins from down here or coins from the bonus action. So I'm just going to change the value of this die to a six. Where do I want to go? I need to travel. I need... Oh, let's just do that first then, eh? Let's... Oh, I need some contracts as well. So do I want to do that? Let's let's do that. Why not? Let's. Oh gosh, I'm I'm indecisive now. Let's let's travel. We need to travel. We want to do that. So let's just get that out of the way. And we'll change these both to twos. I'm gonna pop them down here. Take my two travel because I want to go to this city, Lanzau. Cost me three camels on the trip to this oasis. Won't cost me anything more to get to here, and I put down my trading post. So now this action is available to me. I'm also going to buy, buy a black dice. All right, let's pass. So you travel around the board and put your trading post wherever you stop. Um, Oasis, they don't do anything. They just make it harder to travel around the place. So they don't do anything. Just these cities, they are the things that do, do something. Now, there are some special cities. Beijing is a special city. So this one... The first player there to put the trading post down gets 10 points, which my opponent did. Whoever's second gets 7 points, third gets 4 points, first gets 1 point. And also, if you have a trading post here at the end of the game, two of your resources equals 1 point. So that is quite a nice wee bonus as well. So especially in a two-player game, very, very important to get to Beijing. In a four-player game, important as well, but less important if you're not going to be first or second because you know four or one points isn't a whole lot um but no still still very important where where should i go let's we could go here we could travel here if i take some golds maybe i'll do that actually let's change these values oh hang on i need some camels first don't i so let's instead of doing that let's take some camels And let's pass. Um, yeah, so, so Beijing is a wee bit special. You get points instead of being able to put a dice there like on these cities. Now you also have this travel cards. Now they are little uh, goals throughout your game. Now if you travel to those two cities mentioned on that card, 
Karakorum and Adana, then you get seven points. This card here, Lanzau and Adana, you get five points, which is why I wanted to go to Lanzau here. Now, I've already been to Adana, so I'll get five points at the end of the game for that card. This one here, if I manage to travel up here, which I think I will do, I'll get seven points for that. So, yep, we're going to try and, and do that trip as well. And um, you also get bonus points for each of the cities that you visit. So here, you know, you can see I've got four cities. I've got, well, luckily I've got Adana twice. I've got Lanzau and I've got Karakorum. And you can see down the bottom, if you go to one of those cities, you get one point. Two of the cities, you get three. Three of the cities, you get six. And four of the cities, you get ten. So I'm going to get ten points because I'm going to travel up here, which is very good for me. Let's change these both to threes. Let's select them because I need to go one, two, three. I'm going to pop them here. And remember, I couldn't put red dice here, but I'm putting my black dice there. So I... Oh, I'm short of something. What am I short of? Why is that? Oh, I'm short of a money. That's what I'm short of. Because it's going to cost me 12 money to do the movement. And it's going to cost me three money to put my dice there. Because there's already dice there. And I only have 14 money. So I need... I could get some money here. That's one way of getting money, and I think I'm going to do that because that's not going to cost me an action. So that's a bonus action, so I can still do my movement on the same turn. And then I'm going to travel up here. Going to give me the bonus points on that card. Look at that, beautiful. And I'm going to pass. So traveling around the board is really important. Now you've also got nine trading posts in total. And if you place the 8th and the ninth post, you get bonus points. For the 8th, if you put 8 down, you get 5 bonus points. For putting 9 down, you get 10 bonus points. So that's, that's beneficial as well. It's quite hard to do that. But, um, you know, a good amount of points if you can do it. I don't think we're going to be able to get there this game, but that's okay. All right, let's try and do a cheeky contract to finish. It's just that, or we could go here and get trade our two golds for four points. Or is there a contract we can finish for some points? Because this is the last turn of the game. Can't do this one, can't do this one. Don't think I can do any of those, actually. So let's put our dice on here and trade our two golds for some points. I think that's the way to go. Let's change it. doesn't actually matter because I can only do it once anyway. But let's do that. Let's change that one time. I trade my two golds for four points. And that's that's all she wrote for my game. That's it. That and, and I think I've explained most of the base game there. So you travel around the board. You get points for traveling. You get points for putting a trading post in Beijing. You, you get points for filling contracts. Oh, as we just won the game, what a great game. I'm just going to say GG to my opponent. What a great game that was. Close game, 86 to 80. Well done, Jimmy Joe from the United States. Good game. Yeah, so so that's how you get points. You, um, you get points for base points through the game, like filling contracts and, and, uh, and putting your dice on the big cities that give you points. Or in my case, I got uh, quite a few points for the, the city Kochi. Excuse my pronunciation. I got reoccurring three points each turn. Um, and every time I also selected it from the bonus from my other small city, I got three points. So that's, that's your base points. Now, Beijing points, as I explained, first person there gets 10. Second player there gets seven. So Jimmy Joe was there first, 10 points for, for Jimmy. Seven for me remaining resources that is so if you have a trading post in Beijing then you get uh two oh sorry one point for each two resources you have left I had three left over so I got one point Jimmy had none so he got no points camels don't count as resources poor camels so so yeah just one to, to none there matching city goal points so that's those cards that I was showing to you before I managed to do all of mine, which is really nice. I think Jimmy just managed to do one of them. And the unique city goal points, that's what I was saying um, 
So we went to three unique cities on our card. So we got six points. Jimmy managed to do the same. Now, the player that fills the most contracts also gets a bonus of seven points. So we must have done the same. We both did six contracts. So we both got seven points for that. But if you had more than your opponent, you'd get seven and your opponent wouldn't get, wouldn't get anything. And then remaining coins, you just get one point for every 10 coins you have left over, rounded down. So that is the base game. Now there is one huge part of the game that I didn't get to. One huge part of the game, which changes the game completely. Now, the, everything I explained is the base game. That is how you play the game. But, we have these cards on the side. And these cards are your character. And, and there are eight different characters in the base game. And if you're playing a simple game, they get drawn to you at random. But if you're playing a uh, a you know an expert game you get to pick which one you want based on a drafting system and they are incredibly overpowered each one of the cards completely breaks one of the rules that i've just mentioned so my card what does my card do you can see throughout the game i got to pick the value of my dice and that's because i of my card now i didn't have to roll any dice i got to choose and that is just my character's power. Amazingly overpowered, you would think. But they're all so overpowered. All of the cards. And that's what makes this game beautiful is and so different every game is because these cards these cards are so overpowered. I get I got to choose the value of my dice every single time. So that's that's huge. That's why you never saw me roll. But what my opponent's card is incredibly overpowered as well. They got see a little explanation mark there next to the white dice they got a white dice they got an extra dice to roll every single turn that's an extra action you know an extra uh, value on the dice every single turn and that's just a huge huge advantage as well this is one of the the strongest cards uh, i don't think it's the strongest card in the game there are stronger cards but that is a very powerful card and you also get a contract every turn as well so you don't have to go down to this contract uh, stack as often either a very powerful card too very but but they're all so powerful um, so hey, I'll go through the cards all the different cards there's eight different ones in the base game I think there's an expansion as well with even more characters I'll go through those in another video um, but yeah really nice cards and that's just adds so much variation to the game and makes it so much fun all, all these cities they change every game as well so you have to plan your trip around the board based on your goal cards and based on where the really powerful cities are this one here gave me so much money early on so i tried to go down here this way also i adana was one of the goals on my cards on both of my cards so it was just made sense for me to go down this way even though it's a bit more expensive for me to travel this way it just seemed to make sense for me to do that so that's why i went this way my opponent went up the top uh yeah you could see um, that was one of their goal cards and moscow was also one of their goals so that's why they went that way and um yeah just a really nice game we were playing two players just to keep the video length um down a wee bit but you can play three or four player and it's probably a better game with four players um but just having a go today and um and seeing how it how it's all done hope you know how to play now get involved it's new on board game arena and a whole lot of fun a whole lot of fun to get involved maybe play with me next time so um yeah hope you like the video like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.